Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to Dynamics Tidbit Tuesday at 2, presented by Behringer. Um, and welcome to the first one of the series. So this is going to be uh, a series of webinars that we're going to hold every month um, on the second Tuesday of the month. Uh, and then, again, it'll be at 2 o'clock. And today's topic is the unified interface and basic user settings. Um, so just to introduce myself, my name is Christina Bailey. I am a Dynamics 365 Implementation Specialist here at Behringer Technology Group. Um, just some fun facts. I have over 10 years of Microsoft CRM and Dynamics experience. I actually started on version 4.0. I'm currently a D365 online user of version 9.1. I do have a blog on our website, uh, Dynamics Viva. So if you go to Behringer.net um, about us blog, you can look for my blogs out there. I am currently working on a blog series surrounding best practices. So if you're a system administrator, you can go and look at our best practices surrounding a lot of the different components and configurations um, within the system. And one of my favorite topics right now is AI. I'm very fascinated by it, and it's something that I really want to learn a lot more about. Um, for today's agenda, we're going to navigate the unified interface, which is also referred to as the UI. Uh, we're going to look at some user settings that you can configure under general and email, and then we're going to have a Q&A session. Um, so I just want to ask a quick poll question. Are you currently using the unified interface? Bear with me one second. So it should pop up on your screen. You can go ahead and open, answer the question. Okay, great. So it looks like most of you are, some of you are not, and that's okay. Um, okay, so let's look at the unified interface. Um, so for some of you, it might take some getting used to, but in the end, I feel that it's going to be a much nicer and cleaner interface. Um, and if you're ever wondering why it's called the unified interface, it's because the interface is the same no matter what device you're using, whether it be a tablet, a phone, your computer, a laptop. The interface is going to be the same across all devices, so that's why they call it unified interface. So just some differences between the unified interface and the web app. All your entities are now listed along the left, so they're no longer at the top where they used to be and you had to navigate from the different groups. Everything's going to show up down the left here. Um, and if you're on a smaller device and you want to give yourself a little bit more real estate and room, you can click this little pancake button up here and that's going to collapse it for you and just give you little icons instead. And then if you wanted to see the, the full site map again, you can just click it again and it'll expand it. Um, if you click on the home button, it's going to take you to your designated home area. And we're going to talk a little bit later when we get into user settings about how you can change this. So for me, it's the default, which is taking me right to the dashboard. Um, so below the home button, we see the recent button. Um, so if you're if you've used the web interface or you're using the web interface now, this is the button that is that used to be up here um, on the upper right. So now it's over here on the left. And if you click here, it's just going to show you some of the recent items that you've viewed. Um, and then below recent, uh, we have pinned. So the pinned items used to be part of the recent list, but now it's under its own, its separate area. Um, I don't currently have anything pinned, but if I did, those items would show up right here. Um, and if you want to know how to pin something, you can do that right from your recent. So I can just click on this little thumbtack, and now that becomes a pinned item, and it'll show up under my pinned items. And again, if you want to unpin it, you just click on that pin again. So this is really nice if you if you work on certain um, accounts or contacts or leads all the time, you can pin those items and that way you don't have to search or navigate to the entity. You can just easily access it from right up here. 
Um, so below this, we have all of our different entities. And depending on your security and what access you have and what app you're using, you may see different items here. Um, that is one of the nice things about the UI is that your system administrator can create different apps so that you only see the things that you need. Um, and as a user, you could ac have access to multiple apps. Uh, right now, I am in the sales hub. So you can see up here, I'm in the sales hub. But if I had access to other apps, which I do, if I click on this little down arrow to the left of the sales hub, I can see all of the apps that I have access to. So I have a customer service hub, I can go into marketing. So de again, depending on your security, um, you may only see one app, you may see multiple apps, and they can be configured um, just to have the, the information, the entities that you need for that specific app. Um, so down here on the bottom left, you'll notice a little toggle button and um, right now it's I'm in the sales area. So within an app, there can be different areas. So for the sales hub, we have sales, we have app settings, we have sales insight settings, and we have help and support. So this is the way I can just switch um, between the different areas. So this is gonna take me into some more configuration items. Um, sales insights, if you have that installed, you'll have that, you'll have the settings there. If you have, again, if you have um, security to access that. And then help and support. So let's look at help and support. So from here, I can access help. So I have a help center, and that's gonna take me out to Dynamics Resources. <clears throat> but the nice thing here is that you can actually submit an idea. Um, a lot of the improvements that have happened, um, a lot of the improvements that you've seen over the years actually come from user feedback. So this is how you can uh, submit an idea to Microsoft. Um, you can actually look at ideas that are out there. You can vote them up. You know, you can see that there's a lot of uh, posts out here of different ideas. So if there's something that you think would be, you know, if you have a suggestion for an idea, if you have some new technology that you want to suggest to Microsoft, this is how you can do that. And it's, again, it's under help and support and then submit an idea. So it's that easy to get to it. Um, so let's go back to our sales area. And let's look at a record in the system. So let's go into leads. And let's look at a lead. So some differences with the new, um, the new UI. We have our tabs across the top here uh, versus having to scroll down a long form. Um, if you remember in the web app, you used to have the little um, pancake button up here next to the, the record name, and you could click on that, and you could jump to tabs, and you could collapse and expand tabs. But now instead, your tabs are just listed across the top. So you can click on the different tabs and see the different information and fields under those tabs. Um, the timeline has replaced the social pane. Um, so you can see, you know, there's, you can see any notes, any activities, they're all going to be listed here in your timeline. If you wanted to add anything, you can click the plus button to add a new activity or a new note. Um, and if you wanted to filter, you can use the little funnel for filtering options. And the filter uh, by is nice because it actually gives you relevant, relevant filter criteria based on the records on the timeline. So I might see different filter criteria based on the record I'm on because the activities are going to be different for the records. And then if I want to turn off the filter, I can just click that funnel again. Okay. Um, so if you remember in the old system to access related records, you had to click up here next to the little there's a little arrow to the right of the record and you would click on that and you would see all of the related entities. Now it's a lot easier. So now all you have to do is click on this little uh, related tab right here and it takes you into all the related entities. And what's nice about this is if I actually click on one of these entities, 
it's going to show it as a tab up here at the top. Now this is going to go away if I exit this record and come back. I would have to click on related again and select activities in order to see that tab again. But it's just it's a lot nicer than having to click on that little arrow up here, which took you into another page. Now it just adds it as an extra tab, and you can just navigate back to your other items, your other tabs, so you can still see the other data. And if you need to jump back to that information, you can. It's right there. <coughs> Um, uh, so a recent change, we see the header information up here. So the header's always been here, but it doesn't allow you to edit the information by default anymore. You actually have to click on this Chevron button now in order to be able to access the header information. And this is actually nicer because a lot of times information was getting changed in the header by mistake. So now you actually just have to click on this little arrow button, you can change your information, and then you can save your record. Um, your business process flow still shows up at the top of the screen if it's active on the record. And it's a little different than, it, than the way it looks in the web app. So if I click on the little bullet, it, this, the bullet tells me which phase I'm in, which stage I'm in. So right now I'm in the qualify stage, <coughs> excuse me. So these are all the fields for my qualify stage. And I do have the ability to pop this out. So if I wanted to anchor this to the side of my screen, I could anchor it to the side of my screen. And as I go through the different stages, those these fields would stay over here anchored on the right. If I wanted to unanchor it, I can just click this X button and that'll unanchor the stage. And just as before in the web app, you can view the fields in future stages. So if I just want to see what I have to do next, you know, what I what what am I going to have to get done for the proposed phase, I can look ahead just to see what fields and what steps are within the future stages. Okay. So let's have a look at some of these other buttons that are up here on the upper right. Um, so we have our search. So this is going to do a global search across all records in the system. So if I click on that, it's going to take me to my search page and I can type in a word. And it's going to bring me to, uh, to global search. And what that means is it searches across multiple entities. So I searched for the word cat. It brought up some accounts. Um, and that's because it searched the contact on those accounts. It brought up some uh, contacts, it brought up a user, um, brought up some activities, leads, and some opportunities. So it searches across multiple entities uh, with whatever um, phrase you type in here or word you type in here. <clears throat> so the next button um, takes you into task flow. This is actually a newer feature that your admin can actually um, set up and configure for you. And this is uh, helps you with some day-to-day -day tasks that you do. Um, you know, so update a contact. It just walks you through an easy task flow that helps you update a contact record, follow up with an opportunity after meeting. Um, and again, your uh, system admin can actually set up new task flows for you. So if there's something that you feel would benefit a lot of the users or benefit you know yourself you can ask them to set up a task flow for you uh, the next button is what's called relationship assistant <clears throat> so this is going to be specific to you um, you're going to see things in here that other users are not going to see if you have your email linked it's going to actually give you suggestions based on your emails. It'll say you just received this email, you know, three days ago, do you want to reply? So it's your own personal relationship assistant within Dynamics. Uh, the plus sign is going to be used to access the quick create, which is very similar to the web app. Um, so if I wanted to create a new account, I could just use, I could go here to create a new account rather than having to navigate over on the left to accounts and then click a new record. I can create a new account from anywhere in the system. 
Uh, the next is the funnel, which is the advanced find. Um, this actually hasn't changed much since the web app. It's very similar to the way it used to be. <coughs> uh, I'll let this load here for a second. Um, there is one thing that I do want to point out on this. that we're gonna talk about with user settings. Try to click that again. Okay, so I'll let that load for a second. Um, <clears throat> connect and share, this is just similar options to your uh, to where when we went to help and support. So you can submit an idea from here as well. Um, and then we have this little gear icon, and this is what's going to take you into your personalized, your personalized settings. If you are a system admin, this is where you can get into the advanced settings. So as a system admin, you go to settings a lot, you do solutions and configuration items. You have to, um, you need to go into advanced settings now to access that. Let's see if our advanced find loaded, it did. So the one thing I just wanted to point out on the advanced find here. Um, so by default, this is just gonna show up in what's called simple mode. So it'll give you the ability to, to um, edit the query, but it doesn't give you the ability to add new items to this query. In order to do that, you always have to click this details button. So once you click details, it opens it up and it allows you to add more criteria to your query. And the reason I'm pointing this out is I'm gonna show you in your user settings, how you can default this to always have details depressed so that you never have to access, you don't have to click on it every single time you come in here if you wanna um, change, the, change the query criteria on an advanced line. So let's look at some user settings. Okay, so under the general tab, uh, we're gonna look at a few things here. Uh, we talked about the home page. So earlier when I clicked on the home page, it took me to dashboard. And I just mentioned that that was because that's what's set as my default. And it's set as my default based on my user role and I've never changed that. So here I have the ability to select my default pane. So this again, correlates to our areas that were down here on the left. So I'm gonna do sales and then what my default tab and by default tab, it means your entity here. So maybe I work in leads every day. So I want leads to be my default. So every time I log into the system, into the sales hub, I want it to take me to directly to my leads. So this gives me the ability to change that. And not only is it going to take me there every time I log in, that's now going to be where it takes me when I click home. So I could be anywhere in the system. If I click that home button, it's going to take me to leads because that's what I have set in here. Um, records per page. So by default, it's going to be 50 records per page. Um, and this is the, the records that show up in a view or in an advanced find, it's gonna show you 50 records at a time and you just have to go from page to page to see the next set of records. So you can change this, you can go all the way up to 250. So that'll show you 250 records per page rather than the 50. And then here we have the advanced find. So this is what I mentioned earlier. So I don't have to click that detail button every time. I can switch this to detailed. So now every time I go into an advanced find, I'm going to be able to edit that criteria without clicking that detail button at the top. Um, you can set your time zone. Um, you can also set your default currency. So if your company has uses multi-currency, you might want to consider setting your default currency here so that anytime you create a new record, it'll use this, it'll set it to this currency here. Um, and the other tab we're gonna look at is the email tab. So the two things I wanna talk about here are the track option and the create option. Um, so if your company has tracking the um, server-side sync turned on, 
you can choose what you want to track. Do you want to track all your email messages? Do you only want to track email messages in response to your emails um, that were tracked to Dynamics? Uh, do you want to track email messages from any lead contact or account? Um, any Dynamics records that have email enabled? Or do you want to track nothing? So again, by default, it's going to track email messages in response to a tracked email. <clears throat> but you want to be careful because if you change this option, so let's consider changing it to all email messages. And then if we look down here, we have this automatically create records in Dynamics. And we have it checked off to create contacts. So if I'm tracking all of my email messages and I'm saying it, I'm telling it to create contacts. That means it's going to create a contact record for every single email that I receive. Um, that's probably not something I want to do. So when you, if you change these options on your email tab, just consider what you change them to. So you want to be a little bit careful. If you're going to track all email messages, you might not want to create a contact or lead, or maybe you do want to create a lead for every single email that gets that you receive in your inbox it's going to get tracked to the system um, and this this is only if it can't find a match so if it can't find a match to the contact or a lead then it's going to create a new one otherwise it'll track it to that existing contact or lead um, but you can also uncheck this so i can track all email messages and not create contacts or leads so you just kind of want to you know consider what options you pick here and then I'm going to say OK, and that's going to save my settings. And if I click Home, it's going to take me to Leads because that's what I set as my home page was Leads. So that is it for our demo today. Um, just to recap, we went through navigating the UI. We went through some general user settings and some user email settings. Um, so now uh, we're going to open it up for questions. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to type in the chat your questions. Okay, um, so no questions, but that's okay. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you are gonna receive a follow-up email with a link to the recorded webinar and also a survey. Um, so please fill out the survey. And if you have any topics that you'd like to hear about in future uh, Dynamics Tidbit Tuesday at two, please feel free to submit them through the survey. We will definitely get those topics on the agenda. Um, I'd like to thank you all for attending, and here's our contact information if you'd like to reach out to us.